Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Legere, we talk a lot about the race to 5G, and we've talked about it today. And we, I mean, we all recognize that when we're competing in this, we're competing with China, and I mean, there is no real private business in China, and they have a sense in a unity of purpose as a country in these types of scenarios that we don't. But I, my question is, what does it mean for the U.S. to win the race to 5G? Why? I mean, we're talking about short-term and jobs and those types of things, but a, a longer view of the economics of what this means, and that's before we get into national security <coughs> questions. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, sir. The um, statistics uh, from CTIA suggest that there are three million American jobs at stake with 5G leadership. That being that if we don't retain and take leadership in 5G as we did with 4G, we can lose those jobs. There will be $350 billion of investment and a half a trillion of economic impact. <coughs> right now, uh, uh, the U.S. is behind China and South Korea in the deployment of 5G, as you say, heavily because the country of China has a massive state-run budget to deploy 5G as a critical national priority. With what we're going to do with the new T-Mobile, the $40 billion with investment in the creation of the new network, and forcing AT&T and Verizon to not just have short-term focus on millimeter wave and small geographies, together we can lead to the country to 5G and attain that critical position. Well, and when we get into this technology, I think it's important to recognize, too, I mean, we'll pay $800 for a phone, but not if there's one available for $740. I mean, that, that, is, that is the nature of the American consumer. So when we start talking about where, where these processes are made and, um, those, and that types of things. But I mean, basic economics tells us more capacity should, should relate to lower prices. But the 5G dates are, you know, 2021, 2024. And those dates, I mean, for everybody in here, those dates seem like a long way off. But can we expect to see improvements in speed and performance and, I suppose, most cr critically, capacity before then? Yes. The, uh, the, the new T-Mobile's network is going to have median speeds by 2024 of 450 megabits. Uh, by 2021, it'll be 150 median speeds across the whole country. And as I said, uh, we're aspiring to cover 96 percent of all of rural America. The promise of 5G, by the way, is 100 times the speed and 100 times the number of devices and 10 times the latency. So it's a major transformational step. But even as we migrate to it, the new T-Mobile speeds are going to be 15 times faster. And I just, I always, on my never-ending quest to educate people about North Dakota, I, we're, we have the best rural broadband in the entire country. And when you deal with a success story for that, North Dakota is it. But we do recognize that rural America is significantly underserved across across the entire country. So I guess then my question for Mr. Clare would be, I mean, do you think Sprint can no longer com is a continue viably as in the nationwide competitor, especially as we transition to 5G, 5G under the current structure? There will be a different Sprint. Uh, in order for Sprint to be able to offer 5G in our current coverage, which is about half of AT&T's and Verizon's coverage, we would have to spend close to $25 billion. As you know, Sprint already has $40 billion in debt, and we don't make any money, we're barely break even. We would basically have to borrow that money from the bank and potentially have to increase prices, and we would only be able to offer 5G in selected areas. And the promise of 5G needs to be coverage end to end so we can enable the new technology that would come with 5G. So Sprint would be a very different company. Now, why this is extremely relevant is today, AT&T and Verizon, again, like I said before, they, they have 93% of the, of the profit they generate and 70% of the market. If you shrink a Sprint to be in a smaller company, then basically the market share of AT&T and Verizon would grow more and the, the, the market dominance or the market abuse that they have will eventually grow. So the way to make this market more competitive is by allowing Sprint and T-Mobile to merge to create one third viable competitor that will bring competition to America. Thank you, and I think you and I could probably have a, a longer conversation than 20 seconds will allow about what happens, what, what potential pitfalls exist if Sprint does shrink and raise prices and how that looks to your, your current economic outlook and the, the type of company you are now versus the type of company you'd force to be in four years. 
I mean, it'll be a smaller company, as, uh, as I said, and more importantly, it'll make the other two much, much stronger. And as we talk about market dominance, they will actually become a lot more dominant if, that's, if, that, would, if that would be the case. Thank you.